Hello, everyone. Today, I have Jerry McGinnis, who is a former partner at KPMG and the, and the author of a new book called Advice for a Successful Career in the Accounting Profession. This book answers any questions you have as an accounting student starting your career all the way up to, if you'd like to, being a partner. Today, Jerry is going gonna, gonna to talk to us about his experience and what he can share with you, either as a CPA candidate, a future CPA partner, or a current accounting student. Jerry, thank you so much for agreeing to have this interview with us. And please, if you don't mind, could you tell us a little bit more about your background, about yourself? Sure, man. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for having me and delighted to be with you today. As you mentioned, uh, I'm a CPA by background and training. I did spend my career with KPMG in the Philadelphia office. Uh, I was on the audit side of the house, so eventually I became an audit partner serving clients in a variety of industries. My particular area of focus was emerging growth companies, technology companies, many of whom had raised venture capital and eventually went public, so very interesting area. Uh, later in my career, I did have the opportunity to get into some leadership roles with the firm. So I spent six years overseeing our audit practice in Pennsylvania that included our offices in Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Harrisburg, and then eventually finished up my career for the last eight years as the office managing partner of the Philadelphia office. That role uh, really gave me an opportunity to work with our advisory and tax professionals, as well as our audit professionals, and really have a lot of involvement in the community interacting with uh, our clients, prospective clients, the marketplace. One of our core values at the firm was to try and give back to the communities a little bit. So we did a lot of charitable work. Uh, since retiring from KPMG a few years ago, I've, I've had the chance to get involved on, on a couple boards. So I'm serving on the board of a public company, technology company as their audit committee chair. I'm also serving on the board of a mutual fund complex in the asset management space doing some nonprofit board work as well and some consulting work. But one of the things that's really been fun for me is uh, I've been helping out the accounting program at a local university near where I live in Southern New Jersey called Rowan University. And I support their accounting program as an executive in residence. Absolutely, absolutely. And now it's time to give back to the community, as you mentioned. I mean, your book, it's a roadmap. I, I, I read it. It's just take you step by step why you want to start an, a profession in accounting all the way up how to succeed in the real world. So if you don't mind, I'm going to be asking you about the book itself. I want you to emphasize, I mean, we can, I wish we can go over the, the whole what, 16 chapters, I believe. I, we, 18 I, I actually, we, but you were close. Yes. Is, is, is how many? Seven, 17? 18. 18, 18. But I want to go through it. Yeah, I want to focus on the main points. And the first one is, a lot of people who are listening, they may not be accounting majors. They might be business students who end up on my YouTube uh, trying to learn financial or managerial accounting. Could you tell us why accounting is a good major? We're both biased, obviously, but you are a proving success story. You are a, a former partner at KPMG, so please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mansur. Great question. And actually, chapter one of my book is entitled Why Accounting is a Terrific Profession. And in there, I share, you know, that um, people talk about the financial rewards and the ability to make a good living, and that is certainly true. But there are many other aspects of the accounting profession that are terrific, right? It's challenging, interesting work. You have a seat at the table, whether you're an outside auditor or you're the CFO of a company, you're literally in the boardroom as important decisions are getting made at companies of all sizes. It could be a Fortune 500 company. It could be a family business, it could be a nonprofit, but accountants are at the table. Warren Buffett, the famous investor, famously said, accounting is the language of business, and it's true. So Absolutely. if you want to be on the leading edge of American business, I can honestly say there's no better profession than accounting. And many accountants I've known, folks who have started out in accounting, majored in accounting, have branched out and done other things in their career and risen into senior level leadership roles in the C-suite of all kinds of companies. They sit on the boards of public and private companies. In the book, I tell the story of my friend, Ed Ham my friend Ed Hanway. Ed started with one of the larger accounting firms as a staff auditor. He eventually left and joined an insurance company. That insurance company was involved in multiple business combinations. They eventually became Cigna, a Fortune 50 company, and Ed became the CEO of Cigna, leveraging his accounting background all the way. 
you know, if nothing else, you know how to read a P&L, right? And if you're managing a business, that's a skill set that's pretty important. Absolutely, absolutely. And we need the accountant in all, in all industries, whether it's sports, software, real estate, pharmaceutical, technology, it doesn't matter. You can, you can, you can have that seat on the table if you are, if you are part uh, of the accounting process. Start, you have, always have to start as a staff and move up. Now, many students, they also finish their accounting degree, but they don't go for their CPA. Could you explain the importance why go for your CPA? Yeah, you know, this is good. This is chapter two of my book. You know, it's entitled, Is the CPA Path the Right Path for You? And I try and address that question in a very objective fashion. It may not be the right path for everyone, but for many it is. And as you alluded to, I have a bias. You know, I think if you're going to be an accountant, if you're going to get an accounting degree, go for that top designation, which in my opinion is the CPA. There are many other great designations out there. If you're going to be a management accountant, perhaps a CMA is a good path. If you're going to be an internal auditor, perhaps you want to pursue that internal audit designation. There's forensic designations. There's all sorts of designations. I actually describe them all in the book, just so students and readers understand the many options they will have with an accounting degree. But my end advice to the reader is become a CPA maybe combine it with another credential. So if you're in management accounting, CPA, CMA. But the reason I believe the CPA is kind of the gold standard, it's well recognized by not just people in business, but the lay person on the street kind of understands the importance of the credential. Over a long career, most individuals will make more money. They'll be offered better promotions. When they transfer jobs, they'll have better opportunities with a CPA designation. And it's a hard test. You know, it requires a lot of work, but it's an investment in your future. And in my case, and I think the case of many others, the return on that investment is substantial over a lifetime. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always remind my students at the end of every recording, you're going to have to study for two to two to three years, and it's going to pay you dividend for the next 40 years. It's going to determine where you live, which car you drive, uh, your partner in life, so on and so forth. Not that those are important in a sense, those should not be your motivation. You should have internal motivation. But if those are your motivation, passing the exam, even though you don't know what you want to do for now, you will figure it out, figure it out later because the CPA will open many doors for you. You talked about the CMA, the CIA, the CFE. Yes, being a CPA, you can do all of those. But if you went into that industry a little bit more specific, if you want to be internal auditor, then you will combine your CPA with the CIA, with your CPA, with the uh, CMA. Another question for you. This may sound very simple, but I want to make sure you clarify it for us. You put it in your own terms. The difference between public accounting and private accounting case. Yes, it's a great question and one that many students who are new to accounting or taking that first accounting class or maybe thinking about accounting often ask. And the simple way I think to answer the question is if you are in public accounting, you are doing work for a client or multiple clients, right? You're providing a service. It could be an audit service. It could be a tax consulting service. It could be an advisory service, but basically you're working for the client. Your firm is sending the client a bill for your time. If you're in private accounting, you're working for a company, right? So you're the CFO or the controller or the management accountant or the staff accountant. You might be preparing the financial statements as opposed to the public accountant is going to come in and audit the financial statements, providing that service to the company. So briefly in public accounting, you know, there are, there are many paths you can take. You can be an auditor, you can be a tax professional, you can be an advisory professional. You could do that at one of the big four accounting firms, or you could do that at a regional firm, a local firm. There's a lot of great firms out there of all different sizes. Same thing, and you alluded to this earlier in our conversation, Mansoor. If you're in private industry and you like uh, technology, right? You could go be an accountant or a CFO for a technology company, or you could work in the fashion industry, or I describe in the book, one of my best friends is uh, somebody who loves sports in general and baseball in particular. He leveraged his accounting degree and his CPA to become the CFO of the Philadelphia Phillies, a job he loves. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And I would like to add one more point. Basically, if you're a lawyer, okay, you could work for one particular company that's private accounting, or you can work in a law firm where you service many clients. So when you service many clients, that's what public accounting is. I know because many students, they have a confusion about this. Now, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ask you another question that's student related. I know you're very involved with the students. And that what advice would you give to students who are entering the profession as a staff accountant? Because, you know, there's a high turnover, but what advice would you give them to kind of stick to it and succeed in this career? Because you went through it. Yes, it's it's a great question. And I would say, number one, don't necessarily believe all the quote unquote war stories you hear about the horrendous hours and the busy seasons and working around the clock. I mean, I talk about this in the book and I try and give a very candid view. I was in the profession 36 years, so I certainly understand what busy seasons are all about. And accounting is a deadline driven business. So that is gonna entail overtime. At times that overtime will be substantial, but it's generally limited if you're an auditor to a certain kind of window of about six to seven, eight weeks during that busy season, kind of from mid-January to mid-March. Why that time of year? Most companies have calendar year end, so they're all getting their audits done, a lot of the tax work's getting done. The rest of the year, there can be times where you will be asked to work overtime. Maybe your client's doing an IPO or working on an M&A transaction, but it's not a steady, constant, long hours throughout the rest of the year. And most importantly, all the firms have become much more aware of the importance of work-life balance. So they have all sorts of programs and initiatives to kind of balance things out for their younger professionals. So I think it's, it's gotten a lot better than it was maybe when I started my career. A couple other quick things in terms of advice for students, get your CPA early. The yes. best time to do it is right after you get out of school. Start studying that summer, you may not be starting your job to the fall. It's a great opportunity to kind of get it knocked out or major portions of it knocked out. Life doesn't get any simpler as you no. get older, right? Your job no. becomes more involved. After a couple of years, you're supervising other people, more responsibility. Maybe a boyfriend, girlfriend enters into the mix. So you're never going to have more time than you have right now getting out of school or as a student. You may think you're busy, but trust me, you're going to get a lot busier in the years to follow. So get the exam early, it's a key success factor. Another thing is uh, I tell young professionals, ask a lot of questions. You know, that's how you learn. And sure, do your work, try and understand something you're working on first. But if you're struggling, ask others for help. Another tip, ask for feedback and ask for feedback on a regular basis. Most companies, firms have formal mechanisms where they will review you once or twice a year and give you formal feedback. That is far too infrequent. Ask for feedback on a regular basis from your supervisor, your clients, your coworkers. That'll help you get better sooner, quicker. Um, last tip, read. You know, reading is becoming a lost art. I talk about this in the book. Successful people read. Nowadays, we get a lot of our information from these devices, text messages, social media, nothing wrong with that. But we need to sometimes get a little deeper beyond the surface and read more substantively. So I tell students and young professionals, read the Wall Street Journal, read other business publications, be informed. It will be a huge boost to your career. Yes, uh, Wall Street Journal, I, I, I love it. Yes, uh, a few things I just want to, I agree with everything that you said, but I always tell the students and everybody who's listening that it is tough. I always tell them, expect the worst. And it may not be, as you said, Jerry, but I always prepare them for the worst. It may not be, but always prepare yourself for the worst. And another advice I can give them is find a good mentor. Find someone who, who is competent, who's willing to help you and uh, meet with them on a regular basis, weekly basis, uh, pay for their lunch, uh, uh, take them out for happy hour, talk to them, have a list of questions. Don't bother them all the time, but have a list of questions. And from week to week or month to month, that list will decrease and you will start to help other people. So find a good mentor. I cannot emphasize this enough. And as Jerry said, um, the CPA work is no two days are the same. You have to figure things out for yourself. And oftentimes, Jerry, you know this, that you as a partner, you may not may not know the solution for an issue and the staff will have to figure it out. So expect to learn on by yourself, to roll up your sleeve, get your hands dirty. And you are talking to a, a KPMG former partner and he's telling you this. So just be prepared 
it's a rewarding career. Every time you learn something, it's not that it's not you learn it and you're going to throw it away. You're going to learn it. It's like you acquire the weapon for your next battle. And that arsenal would increase over time and you become a very powerful professional. It takes time, but that's how it, that's how it works. Well said. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jerry. In chapter 15, you talked about character traits that can help you succeed. Could you choose two or three of them and just any two or three you would like to, because I, I you know, I, uh, I love them all and uh, emphasize them. Any two or three. Sure. Yeah. Happy to do it. Um, so I'll start with attitude. Um, I really do believe your attitude can be either an asset or a liability. And I've met a lot of young professionals that unfortunately it's a liability. You know, they, they seem to always have an issue, a concern, a problem to complain about. And listen, we all have bad days, don't get me wrong. I sometimes have those days where you need to blow off some steam, but generally having a positive attitude, having a constructive attitude, if you see there are issues or challenges, maybe think about what is the solution? What can I do to improve this situation as opposed to it's so, it's so unfortunate I've been placed in this situation. Um, I think in any profession, but certainly in accounting, resilience and mental toughness are important traits you're gonna have some challenging days. It can be a demanding profession, whether you go into public accounting or private accounting, and uh, sometimes things aren't gonna go so well. So being able to kind of mentally work through that and stay positive, really important traits. And lastly, and, and you're right, I list 10 or 12 things in chapter 15, but in the interest of time, I'll just hit one more. Um, there's no substitute for hard work, you know? you really do need to put in the effort and the time to become a master of your craft. And that takes work, whether it's studying for the CPA exam or doing a good job once you get out into the profession. Um, don't be afraid to work hard. Again, don't believe all the 80 hours a week, all year round, they're myths in my mind, but you are gonna have to work hard. Absolutely, Jerry. I would like to add a small experience that I used to utilize. I used to visit the office. I work in a medium, I would say medium CPA firm, Bucknell Lissaki and Company in Bethlehem. I would go to the office on Saturday, off season, just to look at the prior year paperwork to learn. It takes time to learn. It's you have to make the investment and there's no substitute for hard work. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to have a high IQ. As long as you are willing to put the time and learn, Yes, there is, there's going to be a struggle, challenges. This is how you grow. It's like growing your muscles. You got to work it until it becomes stronger. And these days, especially now in, 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 in February, people are very busy during the tax season. And I'm sure some of them will be listening to this. What could you give them? I know there's a one whole chapter about avoid burnout. And this is what I stop, which is chapter 16. Could you give them some tips, please? Because they're studying for the exam. They could be taking a course or two. They can, you know, uh, maybe studying for the exam, internship, and something else. So what would you give them? What, what advice? Yeah. I, so again, you're right. I have a chapter devoted to how to avoid burnout. And it's so important. I mean, I think there are a lot of professions and occupations where burnout happens, you know, whether it's um, police officers, firefighters, frontline responders, um, people in the medical profession, but certainly it impacts the accounting profession. There can be some long hours, as we've talked about in busy season, there can be stress if you're facing a deadline. I think number one, being organized, right? And kind of understanding, looking out seven, eight, 10 days ahead, what deadlines are coming up, not realizing the night before you have a big test. Oh my gosh, I've got to study. That just increases your stress and anxiety. So being, being organized, being prepared, doing things a little bit at a time, rather than studying eight hours the night before, how about we study one hour each of the eight days before that might greatly increase your odds of being successful. Um, I think getting appropriate amount of rest, right? Getting your sleep at night, incredibly important. Um, getting your exercise, eating right. These are all things that when you're under pressure, stress, working long hours, sometimes suffer. But if you make them a priority, they can actually help you um, kind of deal with some of those pressures that might otherwise create burnout. So just self-care, right? Um, exercise, sleep, diet, these things are really important. And lastly, you know, no matter how dedicated you are, no matter how much you love your job, it can't be all about accounting, right? If you're coming home after an eight or 10 hour day and reading accounting textbooks, that's not great. You're going to burn out. So have interests outside of work. Maybe it's sports. Maybe you like to play video games. Maybe you like to hang out with your friends. But whatever you do that helps you get some downtime and recharge your batteries, 
make sure you do that on a regular basis, even during the most busy times. Find that hour or two where you can take a break. And when you come back, you'll be refreshed, you'll be recharged, and you'll be much more prepared to not suffer burnout. Absolutely, Jerry. And I cannot emphasize being organized. I know you have one whole chapter about being organized. I, I will always tell you know, my students, my followers, have two Two to-do list. One, a daily to-do list, like every day. When I wake up in the morning, I'll prepare my to-do list. I'm going to have to do this, 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 and that, and to kind of keep myself accountable. And believe me, guys, it helps tremendously. It keeps you organized and on track. Also have long-term goals, but also short-term goals as well. So you can stay organized until you get your long-term goals. I want to talk to you about the importance of giving back. And many of the students who are listening, they may not be, they may not relate to it. Nevertheless, I want to plant that seed that giving back is important. I believe in giving back. I, I, I figured out giving back by accident when I started my YouTube channel where I was given and I wasn't aware of it. I was, I thought I was just teaching my students, but I was not aware that other people are watching and benefiting. And I, you know, I, I enjoy the giving back now. It's a good feeling. So I want you to kind of, just plant that seed in those future CPAs, future successful accountant, that what does it mean? And you can start to give back today volu by volunteering, but please go ahead. Sure. No, it's, it's a great question and it's important. And I would argue you're never too young to start giving back, right? You might be two years out of school. Maybe you're in your first role where you're supervising other people. Those other people are going to come to you. They're going to have questions. They're going to need help. You're going to be busy doing your own work. Um, the easy thing to do is to give them the short answer, kind of blow them off, right? But if you invest the time to sit with them, help them work through their issue, um, address their concern, you're not only helping them and will feel good about it, you're helping yourself, right? Because you're, you're helping yourself become a better leader, a better supervisor, a better project manager. As life goes on, maybe you're six years out, you're a manager, right? Maybe there's an opportunity to join a nonprofit board and give back to an organization that you care about, that you support. It could be a Little League baseball team. It could be the Red Cross. It could be the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts. My, my advice is find something that you really believe in their mission, but they love accountants, right? Because they have financial statements. They have budgets. They need your help and expertise. And getting involved in an organization, organization like that is a form of giving back, but it can also help you develop your leadership skills. Maybe you'll have an opportunity to serve on the board of that organization and get some governance experience. So the most important thing I could say though, Mansur, is whether, whether you're helping in the community or serving on a nonprofit board or coaching youth sports or helping your younger colleague at work, there's a tremendous sense of satisfaction from helping others. That's been my experience. And actually giving back can be very rewarding to the person that's doing it. So it's kind of a win-win situation. And that's why I definitely encourage folks to begin doing it early in their careers. Absolutely. And by, by, by supervising others, you are really, as Jerry said, you are helping yourself. Learning how to teach, being a good leader, being a good teacher, that's going to pay off down the road. So I cannot emphasize that enough myself as well. Uh, one more thing I would like to like you to talk about that's in the book, having a value creation mindset. Sure. No, it's a very important topic. And, you know, really the, the simple way to translate having a value creation mindset is think like an owner, right? Pretend it's your business. You're not just showing up to check a box and putting your hours. What would you be doing to serve that client better, to get that new client, to, uh, to sort of help develop your colleagues differently if it were your business versus you were working for somebody else? So having a value creation mindset is all about getting up every morning, thinking about how can I make my firm or my company a better place? How can I increase its value? I can assure you if you do that consistently throughout your career, people will notice and you will be rewarded with raises, promotions, opportunities. Um, it's definitely uh, one of the best investments you can make in your future. I wanna mention one other thing briefly, Mansur, that you didn't ask me about, but it's just so important to any business prof professional and particularly accountants. And that is the importance of ethics and integrity, right? We sort of take those things for granted, um, but, but I've seen many cases in my career where people had ethical lapses and it really hurt their careers and hurt their futures. And so 
being ever mindful of the importance of acting in an ethical fashion with high integrity and building trust, those are critically important things for any young professional to think about and, and absolutely accountants. Yes, you can always find a job if you lost your job, but once you lose your integrity, it's done. You can well, always fair. find a job, but you cannot find your integrity again. And as you were mentioning, uh, you remind me of Jim Rohn saying, work on yourself rather than on your job. And by doing so, by product, you will benefit your company. I, I love Jim Rohn. I listen to him. So he always says this, work on yourself. And this is why work on yourself. Treat each job, each assignment as you are the owner. Because in a public accountant, you are actually the owner. They want you to be, they want you to, to be the owner. You just have to prove yourself. So when you think as an entrepreneur, your motivation totally changes. And this is how you have to do it, especially in, in, in every field, but especially in public accounting. Um, Jerry, where can we find this book? Where can students, users find this book? Sure, thank you for asking, Mansoor. So it's available on Amazon if you just Google the title, Advice for a Successful Career in the Accounting Profession, or my name, it'll pop right up. Um, it's also being carried in a couple hundred retail locations around the country here in the U.S., Barnes & Noble, stores like that. Uh, Wiley is the publisher, so it's available on their website. It's also been released in Canada. So uh, I think anyone anywhere in the world can get it through Amazon. That's probably your best bet, but those are some other sources. And it will be listed in the description below on YouTube, if it's on LinkedIn, in the description above. And I'm going to also post your uh, LinkedIn profile, if you don't mind, as well, in case anybody would like to uh, connect with you. Any last uh, word, please, Jerry? No, I would just like to thank you for having me today. It's been great to talk about some of these topics. I think they're incredibly important to young professionals and young accountants and those thinking about the field of accounting. As we talked about, it's a great profession. And you know, I created the book really to be a resource to some of those folks. So I hope they find it helpful. Thank you very much for your time, Jerry. And it's a pleasure uh, hosting you. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, stay safe and stay motivated and study hard.